is up you guys? I'm Charbrix and today I'm gonna to be reacting to Living Ball of Spikes by Brave Wilderness. I don't know what to expect, but the, the thumbnail looks pretty interesting. Pretty interesting, so hopefully it's gonna be quite cool. And uh, with that being said, the original link's in the description. Make sure you go subscribe to Brave Wilderness without any further ado. Let's begin. What's going on, Coyote Pack? Are you ready to meet one of the most bizarre creatures to call Australia home? Let me give you a hint as to what you're about to see. It has no teeth. It has hair, and it also lays eggs. Oh, that's weird. That's weird looking. Any guesses? If you don't know what it is, stay tuned, because we're about to enter into its enclosure. No gloves. I'm going to try to do this without gloves, without getting spiked. Oh, oh, oh super spiky. That's freaking bizarre looking. It's a black, black widow! Isn't that a black widow? Australia is famously known for its iconic mix of unique animal species, many of which cannot be found anywhere else in the world. Some of them, like the kangaroo, are incredibly plentiful, and it's not uncommon in the least to see them quickly hopping across the outback. When it comes to recognizable reptiles, when you think Australia, you definitely think about crocodiles. I also think of freaking poisonous snakes just ready to bah, bite you. However, to my surprise, they were actually rarer than you may think, as both the freshwater and saltwater varieties inhabit mainly the Northern Territory. Today we are back at the Billabong Sanctuary, located in Nome, a small town just south of Townsville in North Queensland. Proudly listed as one of Australia's top ecotourism attractions, this family-owned and operated establishment is home to over 50 native species, including what I consider to be the continent's undisputed champion when it comes to the title of most bizarre. So if you are ready... It looks like a friggin' porcupine. It looks like a porcupine. It really does. I know it's not because porcupines look different, but it looks like it's really close to a porcupine. Let's see if we can get up close... What is that? Kid, no. All right, come on, guys. A kidna. The keepers have left the door slightly ajar. Let's go inside and be. A kidna. A kid. I've heard that before. Extra quiet and see if we can find it. Oh, it's right here. Come in, come in, come in. You have to be careful where you step when you're in this enclosure. Because look at that. Almost like a biological landmine. You may think that this is some sort of cacti, but that is in fact an echidna. That's an animal? That's an animal. And it is buried down in the dirt. If you guys want to see it, I've got to dig it up. And that's that's about it. Kind of looks like a sea urchin, right? That's it? So that's it. It does look like a sea urchin. Or as I said, it looks like a porcupine with the amount of like fur or uh, spikes it has. As well as the way it kind of walks. It's just a ball of spikes? A ball of spikes. Looks like porcupine quills. Um, and it's not something you want to come in and sit down and have a picnic on. So you're just going to sit right here next to it. Oh, now it's really starting to move. Hey, buddy. How you doing in there? Now, actually, it's a lot bigger than that. It is buried down in the dirt. And what we're seeing right here... How is it breathing? If its face is in the dirt, how is it breathing? Is it trying to, like, you know... <laughs> is an incredible defensive pose. Now, this creature is incredibly speedy when it comes to digging, and all it needs to do is sense something dangerous in its environment, like a dingo, and they will immediately use their claws and their powerful legs to dig down into a little burrow like that and erect these spines up in the air. And it's very tough to eat something that is covered in spines like that. But so the, are the, will those come off into your fingers? No, its quills do not release from its body like that of a porcupine. In fact, they're not related to porcupines at all. Could have fooled me. Could have freaking fooled me. They look so similar. I know you guys really want to see this creature. And to do that, I'm going to have to dig it up. And no gloves. I'm going to try to do this without gloves, without getting spiked. Now, these spikes are non-venomous, but if I'm spiked by them, it is going to cause some irritation and it's going to be very itchy. Are so they sharp? Gonna, they're razor sharp. Here, bring your hand in here and just kind of prop down on top there. It's like a pin cushion, right? Yeah! yeah. Oh, and like every time you touch it, it moves. And even that, imagine if you were a dingo and you come into the environment to sniff this, even that little movement can give you a good poke right in the nose. Yeah, you can feel they kind of lay down and when it budges, they get like mm -hmm. really stiff. It's so weird looking. 
And they haven't addressed the issue. How is it breathing under there? You think it would be suffocating, right? Yep, they can lay flat and then they can also be erect like that to protect the creature when it's buried down wow. underneath soft you sure you soil. want to do this? Well, yeah, you guys want to see it up close, right? Sure, All I right. want to see it, but only if you're willing. Oh yeah, well, let me see. My tactic here is gonna to be to try to get to its underside. Now their bellies are much softer than the top side. So if I can get my hand sort of underneath it, I can pull it out and what it's gonna do is curl up into a ball. Here we go. I, I got you, I got you. Got it. There it is. That's crazy. That's an echidna right there. Oh, 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 super spiky. Can you see its face on that side? Yeah. There's a little face right there. Where? Where? Sit down here, I'm gonna plop it on my lap. This is a dangerous little maneuver, but I wanna hold it like this. Wow, look at the spikes sticking out. You know what that animal reminds me of? What's that? Remember that video game we used to play? My favorite video game? Yeah. Sonic the Hedgehog. And actually what's really cool about the echidna is that the echidna was a character in the Sonic series. If you guys- What? It was? Just remember Knuckles? Knuckles! <laughs> you got me in Knuckles. This is the this is the origin of Ugandan Knuckles. This is the real life version. The red one, he had those boxing gloves. He was actually an echidna based off of this animal. And look at that cute little face. You see that elongated nose? That is specialized for catching insects. Now, Do you know the way? Now they're insectivores, which means they primarily feed on bugs and they it's kind of cute and kind of ugly at the same time. Like, that's a freaking long, long nose. And that's kind of cute. But then you look at his freaking hands and like, come on, you gotta cut, you gotta trim those nails, dude. They specialize in eating ants and termites. And similar to an anteater, they don't have teeth. But they have a long, sticky tongue. They use that tongue to kind of feel around inside of old rotting logs underneath. Are those its eyes? Wow, this is almost impossible to see. Rocks and around in termite and ant nests. What they will do is just kind you of. You have to have a bull eye to know the way. Kind of suck those creatures up into their mouths and grind them up against the roof of their mouth, and then they have a meal. It's interesting how the front legs look very similar to the back legs, because these are the little back legs here. See how stout they are? Little chubby feet. Yeah, and the little pads feel like latex. And the front feet, you actually can't see the front feet really well, but they kind of look like the foot of a mole. It's interesting, this animal's like the combination of so- It really reminds you of a hedgehog, but like the grown-up adult version whose life fell apart when they were like 30 or so, and they've been in a downward spiral ever since. That's what it kind of reminds you of. You got the cute little hedgehog, and then you have this. <laughs> So many different creatures and I find that that seems to be the case with many of the animals here in Australia. They're like this weird mix of all these different creatures that we're used to seeing in the United States. Now do they yeah. shed their quills? Uh, yes, they can shed their quills just like hair and they do actually have hair, little coarse bristly hairs in between all of these spines and their skin is incredibly leathery. Now other than the platypus, this is- Hey look at it, look at this little face, that's cute. <laughs> the only mammal that lays eggs. And the female will actually carry the egg inside of her for several months, and then when she lays it, it takes about 10 days for it to hatch. So they bizarre, a mammal that lays eggs. Now how many eggs do they lay at once? Just a single egg, that's it. One egg is all this animal will lay. Here we go, watch this. You guys wanna see it dig into the ground? Sure. Watch how fast it's able to burrow down, watch this. How is it breathing? How is it breathing? This the question still hasn't been answered. How the frick is it breathing? Its face is in the ground. It has to breathe, doesn't it? Was it breathing out of its rear end or something? Any sort of disturbance in the environment? Look at that, they actually push the dirt out to the sides. And those stout little legs and claws allow them to do that. So they don't necessarily dig down forward to protect themselves. They dig straight down so that then they can create that pincushion defense pose. And they have How's incredible it? camouflage too. I mean, any sort of environment How's it breathing, coyote? How's it breathing? It's made of sticks and leaves and dirt, and this thing is gonna blend in perfectly. Now you can imagine if it nestled itself up against a log or in between some rocks, it'd be absolutely impossible for a predator to dislodge it. All right, let's see if we can bring the echidna back up from under the dirt. Come here, buddy. Are you gonna get a shovel? Oh, it was so strong. Dangerous game of operation there. Whoa. There's his face. Get dirt off. There's a little nose. Hi, bud. That's why I think it's cute with the little nose coming out. But it's also kind of ugly at the same time. Anyway guys, I hope you liked this video. 
This is really cool, and that's Sonic. Or that's not Sonic, that's Knuckles. Like, why would you base a character of a video game off of that? Like, <laughs> I guess maybe because it rolls itself up into a ball, so it's kind of similar to a hedgehog. That's why they did it, and if you didn't want to have two hedgehogs, you know, having Sonic and, like, Sonic Jr. or something, you didn't want to have two hedgehogs, you would have to branch out into other animals that would roll themselves up into balls, I guess. That's the only reason I could think. Anyway, with that being said, if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, plus be sure with Friday if you do, and subscribe to the family today. Also, make sure you go subscribe to Brave Wilderness, and with that being said, I'll see you guys next time. Boop.